I'm going to try again. Um, for some reason, I with, with CPAP, I do not go into REM or deep sleep, deep sleep, probably because I'm not sleeping enough. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. There's something that's preventing uh, me from getting REM or deep sleep with the CPAP. And the, the, the theory is that it takes a while to cycle through the different stages of sleep. And you cycle through those stages every couple hours. And that's what the theory is. But, but you know what? I get so, I get so fed up. I get so sleep deprived. I, I'm in so much pain from the CPAP that I say, screw it. And, and I can't not wear the CPAP because I have severe sleep apnea. I get so desperate. I say, screw it. I'm, I, I'm going to close my eyes and sleep without it. Immediately I'm dreaming. Like, like within, you know, within, seconds or a minute i'm dreaming and i wake up you know a minute or two later and it's like heaven on earth that dreaming is like heaven on earth to my brain it's like someone it, it's like water to someone in the desert it's like music to my ears it's like incredible it's incredible it's it What it does to the brain, you just want more and more and more and more. And I wonder what it does to the brain. It's so right. It's so right. And it feels so good. And, um, and it's not about what you might be dreaming about or the content of the dream or anything. Dreaming and REM sleep and deep sleep does amazing things. And amazing things to your brain and it makes you feel good. It's like a drug. So I slept with the CPAP on and had a couple hours of sleep and it's just hell it's just hell and then i'm awake and and you know laying for 45 minutes with this and it's just pain and pain and suffering and i'm sleeping upright and it's just hell on earth and so i said no screw it i can't do it i can't do it took it off. I mean, it, it's dangerous for me to not sleep with the CPAP because I might not wake up. It's prolonged low oxygen. It's potential brain damage and organ damage and a stroke or a heart attack or, you know, I'm so sick and weak and, and worn out. I'm just, I'm just done. And you get so ill and so desperate and you say, screw it, I'm not, I'm not, I can't do it anymore. I'm in so much pain. So I'm upright, I close my eyes, I, I slept for a little while without CPAP, on and off, on and off. Because I'm waking up not breathing, right? So I'm in and out of sleep, in and out of sleep, and I'm dreaming. And oh my God, it's heaven on earth. It is heaven on earth. And, and I'm going back into the dream and I'm waking up and I'm forcing myself to fall asleep again. I'm going back into the dream and it's just it, heaven on earth to be dreaming. It does amazing things to your brain. It does amazing things. And each time I wake up, I can tell my body... I'm making myself breathe, right? And I had this dream 
God. I was in this hotel room and this big connected hotel room, me and there were two other women and another woman. And it was supposed to be two women to each room. And I don't know what the purpose, who they were. I don't know why we were there. I don't know. And I was looking for my makeup bag with all my toiletries and stuff. And I walked into the adjoining room like this two huge hotel rooms connected by a huge open doorway. <laughs> this is really weird. Uh, there was a fish tank on the a huge fish tank on, on a dresser in the other room. And I look and there's my black makeup bag under the water. <clears throat> Someone had thrown my, throw my makeup bag, my toilet, toiletry bags with all my things in it, in this fish tank. And I was horrified. And I wanted to know who did it. And the other three, the uh, two of the other women said she did it. Her name was Donna. One of the women that were, was in the room with us. And Oh, why would she, they're whispering to me to, uh, to tell me that she did this to me. And uh, why? Because she thought I took the room that she wanted. It was really weird. <laughs> so I'm mad at this woman. It's weird. None of it makes sense in it. And none of it means anything. But to just, it was like, and... <laughs> I woke up and I know people are going to misinterpret this. I know it, but I, I woke up to go to, I needed to go to the bathroom. So I woke up and I started to walk to the bathroom. I started, I thought I was going to walk to the bathroom in the hotel room, in our room, right? In this huge hotel room. And, uh, I realized, oh my God, no, I'm here. I'm here. And I have to go to this bathroom here. I, I'm here in my house. And oh my God, you know what it was like? You know, uh, and I'm in the bathroom going to the bathroom thinking this is hell. This is hell on earth. I've been brought back to hell. And, and you know what? Uh, the only thing I can compare it to is people's experiences of a near-death experience. Or what do you call it? An, a a near-death experience. Or when they die and they go to the tunnel and they go to heaven and they have to come back. They're told that they have to come back and they're like, no, no. Don't make me, because it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, you're going back to hell. You're, like, you're in heaven. This is, you found a heaven. And to come back to this, all of a sudden, what you know is hell. And I'm in the bathroom thinking, God, no, no, I can't be here. This is hell. This is absolute hell on earth I feel like I've had a I mean it's not about the dream it's not about dreaming it's about wellness it's about I feel to be living without REM sleep without deep sleep and 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 you can say, oh, I don't get REM, I don't get sleep, blah, blah. You, you can prove that in a sleep lab, whether you're not, whether you're getting REM or deep sleep or not. You can, you can see. Sleep is so underrated. Like, I don't, I wonder if science knows 
what absolute living hell it is to live without REM sleep. It is a goddamn hell. It's hell on earth. It's hell on earth sleeping two hours a night, 365 days a year. Sleeping one or two hours only every 24 hours. Or sleeping three hours. It, or even sleeping four hours and not having REM or deep sleep. Hell on earth. This is a living hell. That experience I had. I was dreaming it and then I wake up and dream it again. Wake up. Dreaming again. Wake up. I'm dreaming again. Wait. It was heaven on earth. Freaking heaven on earth. Like it was like a drug. It was like just amazing. And and I have to go to the bathroom and it's like, oh my God, I'm in hell. I have been brought back to hell. This is hell. This is hell on earth. And you try to... you. I just can't even explain it. It's like realizing everything that you're missing. I I think I th you know what it what I think it is. It is a glimpse of what life is like sleeping as a normal person able to able to sleep and dream. And then waking up back to this hell of not living, not sleeping, not having a life, not having family or friends, not being able to work, not being able to make money. I think people will misinterpret this video thinking, oh, you want to be in the dream and you're having a good dream. Hell no. It's the REM sleep. That REM sleep was, you know, I want to say that REM sleep was like heroin. I've never done heroin. It was REM sleep is an amazing drug or REM sleep is just heaven on earth. It it does something so well. It It just does something so amazing to your brain and to your mind. It was like having minutes of being a normal person and having a normal brain and then being brought back to this hell reality of never sleeping, of not getting REM sleep, of not being able to work, not having family or friends, like trapped in this living nightmare. This is hell on earth. This was like, like, Like a near-death experience. Like, like, and I, and then I thought, well, it's time to get up and it's time to be conscious. It's time to get up. And literally for 45 minutes, my lungs do not want to inflate my it's like somebody stepping, pressing down on my lungs and my diaphragm. And my body does not want to breathe. And literally every single breath, I am f making it happen. I am forcing my body to breathe. I'm forcing my, di my diaphragm to work. And I'm forcing my lungs to inflate. Literally every single breath, I'm conscious that I'm making it happen. I'm forcing myself to breathe. And it's like there's a pocket of air deep down in my belly that's trapped in there. And it's like someone is pushing down on my lungs and pushing down on the di diaphragm. And now I, I think I'm breathing. My brain is breathing now. My brain is making me breathe now. 
but for at least 45 minutes. And what a strange, messed up thing to be forcing yourself to breathe. And my head hurts from prolonged low oxygen. Waking up and being conscious that I'm back in here, in this life, in this desperation, in this isolation, trapped without being loved and cared by, cared for by people, without a family, without, you know, medical help, this desperate made me realize this is hell. I'm in hell. What I had when I was asleep or, or what that was doing to my brain was heaven on earth. People have no idea the gift they have to sleep and to go into REM sleep, to go into deep sleep. To be able to dream. And, and it's not so much about the dream. It's that the stages of sleep is wellness and mental and physical wellness. This is hell on earth. God, to come out of that, that dreaming and to realize, oh my God, I'm not going to the bathroom in the dream. I am here in this hell and I have to wake up to this hell and go use the bathroom here. It literally was, you know, like when people, I know I'm repeating myself, when people die and go to heaven and, and when they're experiencing that, only then do they realize, oh my God, I'm not going back there. Don't make me go back there. Don't make me go back to this hell. Wow. And my body is just, my heart and lungs and my diaphragm. I've been running a marathon for decades. I've been running a marathon. I've been climbing an uphill battle for, for decades. Like, like, 45 years or, or all my life. I've been fighting for my life, not sleeping, not being able to breathe. God, can you imagine being misdiagnosed all these years? And it, it, what it, it's the apnea, but is it the Chiari? Probably. I am trapped in literal hell here. I feel like right now I'm I'm right now I'm experiencing what other people who have died and came back are experiencing. It's a consciousness that I don't know. It it puts it into perspective how what hell this actually is. How strange.